Hello and welcome to the 11th video in this introductory series to neural networks. So in this video then we're going to actually get the value from the neural network that we wrote in the last video to tell our bird whether to flap or not. The value will still be random because we're not doing any learning there so they'll still be useless but we will be asking the neural network to give us the value. Starting point here is going to be in defs.py and I'm going to paste a bit of code again in this video to keep it uh, humming along. Um, three definitions for the number of inputs, the number of hidden nodes, the number of outputs, so two, five, and one, and also our chance of flapping or not. So if the output value is equal or above 0 0.5 from the neural network, then we will flap. That's fairly straightforward. You'll remember when we talked about the inputs, we talked about the horizontal distance to the nearest upper pipe, and we talked about the vertical distance to the nearest gap as well. And when we've got those values, remember when we talked about the neural network, we need to normalize those between 0 0.01 and 0 0.99. So what we need is some way of, of knowing what the maximum possible range of what uh, y is from the minimum to the maximum of being above or below the middle of the nearest gap. And then we need to use this range to then normalize the value between 0 0.01 and 0 0.99. And then we all need to do the same also for the horizontal gap. What is the maximum that we can possibly have? The horizontal distance is actually quite easy. Um, we're going to say that the, the maximum range is the width of the entire display. Technically it isn't. We could take off the distance between the left hand edge and the bird but there's no real point so we'll just normalize it to the saying the maximum possible is the whole width of the display slightly tricky is the y because we could have this situation here where we have a robin that's got a bigger y than where the gap is so the robin's y minus the middle of the gap would be a positive value and the maximum value that can possibly be is the height of the display minus pipe min, which would be the top of the upper pipe, minus the pipe gap size divided by two. So that would be the maximum plus we can have, but we can also have a minus where the robin's y minus the gap y, so in the middle of the gap, is actually a negative number. And that can be as negative as the pipe gap size divided by two minus pipe max. And that'll then give us what's really the biggest negative number we could possibly have. And putting those together then to normalize, then you can look at the whole range we've got and see that actually the range is 800. It's minus 420 to plus 380. And that means then that we need to, for any Y value we get, if we want to normalize, we have to make all the values positive. So effectively we have to add 420 onto all the values we get to get them all positive. And then we'll normalize them by this value of 800. So back into the code, what does all that mean? Well, it means what you've just seen on the slides there. We're going to, or I'm going to paste in here so that we have our max y difference, min y difference, y shift, and normalizer. Okay, so that's it then for our definitions. What we need to do now is go into bird.py and we need to start working on getting our neural network up and running. So the first thing to do is import the neural network code as well from the nnet file. And then we need to give our bird a neural network it can work with. So we have our neural network declared for the bird. And what we need to be able to do is ask the neural network to give us some kind of value to know whether we're going to jump or not. To do that, we need to get the input array, and that's the trickiest bit of code that we're going to write in this video. So we're going to make a new function called get inputs. And the definition of the function looks like this. We take in the pipes, and then we set up a variable called closest, which at the moment is twice the width of the display. That's the closest x position of the nearest pipe, which of course is much too big here because we're going to find one that's closer than this value. So we start high and bottom y simply keeps track of the y position of that pipe. And now we'll loop through all of the pipes and we'll ask ourselves if the pipe is an upper, if it's not gone past us, which means if the right hand side of the pipe is not less than our left hand side. And also if the right hand side of the pipe is less than closest, then as we loop, that'll be the closest upper pipe to us. Then we can store the value of closest and the bottom y position of that particular pipe. So that looks like this. So if it's upper, it's closer than closest and it's not gone past us, then store those values there. And once we've done that, we can then calculate the horizontal distance we have to the nearest pipe. So that'll be closest minus our center x position. And then we can also calculate our vertical distance from our center to the center of the gap, which will be our center y 
minus the bottom of the upper pipe plus gap size divided by two. And now we have our horizontal and vertical different distance, we can create an inputs array, where in this array then we want to normalize the distances. So we'll say that the horizontal distance, so the first input is the horizontal distance, divided by the display width, multiplied by 0 0.99, plus 0 0.01 gives us our normalized horizontal distance and the vertical distance then we can use this Y shift and the normalizer. And that then normalizes our Y distance as well. Remember we shift it to bring it all positive and divide it by the full range. And those are our inputs then, our input list, our two inputs that we then return from our get inputs function. So now we need to actually get the jump working. So you remember in the bird collection we were saying here we were going to randomly jump. We'll take this random jumping out now. So we'll just leave the update in there. And then we're going to jump inside the update. And we're also going to pass the pipes in as an argument. And if we go up into jump now, we can send pipes in as an argument. And now we can ask our neural network to give us a value, please. So first of all, we'll say that the inputs are equal to self dot get inputs from the pipes. And now we'll say the value from the neural network is self, our neural network dot get, get max value for the inputs that we've calculated. And last but not least, if the value is greater than jump chance, then we will jump. And that should be all we need to do, barring horrendous spelling mistakes, which sometimes occur, uh, to actually be asking our neural net to tell us whether we're going to jump or not. Remember, we're not going to get any performance out of this, but at least the net will be up and running. So let's have a look at that working then. And of course, I had made one small spelling mistake. There was a T missing in nnet outputs here. Sorry about that. Let's just uh, try it again. So fire up the game. And okay, we're not going to get anything actually successful here, but uh, the birds seem to be flapping around fairly uh, randomly and we can be satisfied that things seem to be working with the neural network. Good. Okay, then. So the neural net is up and running. We're querying it. The last little thing to do now is actually do the mutation and get the application to learn using its neural network. So I hope that was all clear and good. Um, thanks so much for watching, taking the time and see you in the next one.